grab my handbag, which I put my jewellery into, but I lost a lot of other jewellery, which was in another case, which I was waiting to take off to have repaired. This easily would be the longest project I've planned to do. This project actually originally started in 2005, but nothing ever actually happened with it. The footage is so old that I've actually filmed it on mini DV, these old things. Now, I don't even know how to get this onto my computer. The camera, look at the camera. A little Panasonic handheld. I'd have this in a massive underwater housing and film with that. But check out how old this beast is. I've still got it, which is pretty cool. So about this project, this is about uh, Mikhail Lermontov. And lots of people still to this day don't know anything about the Mikhail Lermontov. Well, it's actually one of New Zealand's worst maritime disasters. A 170 meter Russian cruise liner it was over here with about 400 Australian passengers, mainly elderly. They were originally doing a trip of the South Island heading into Fiordland. They went into Picton and from there they were heading around into Fiordland, then back to Australia and were leaving Picton, had a local pilot on there who was uh, guiding the guys where to go. For some reason he guided them or they just went on the narrow part of Cape Jackson. They struck the reef there, headed up into Port Gore and they were going up to beach it for some reason they didn't put the anchors out or the motor flooded and shut down. They drifted back out into Port Gore where it keeled over on his side and then started sinking and ended up on his side on the bottom. All the passengers got off uh, safely, luckily. I think one of the crew died on there. I'm not sure what happened there or what the scenario was on that. That sunk in 1986. Soon after the sinking, a lot of the diesel, fuel and bits and pieces were all salvaged off the Macau to make it a more manageable, safer wreck in the water. Since then, it has become quite a tourist destination for wreck diving. As you can imagine, the sheer size of it at 170 metres long, it is massive. But the other bad side or dark side of it is quite a few people have lost their lives diving on it. Wreck diving is one of the single most dangerous sports on the planet. So do not wreck dive ever without advanced qualifications or going with guided professionals. The Macau was sitting in about 36 metres of water and the top of it's I believe about 15 metres of water. Even if you don't want to go through the inside of the wreck or anything, actually doing the dive on the out, outside of it, it's pretty cool. You can go and see the props, you can go and see all the outside of it, which is quite a cool, eerie sort of a dive. Also very dangerous. Some of you might know that I'm actually a dive instructor. I first got my dive ticket in 1992 where I did a paddy open water diver. And then in 1998, I got my SSI dive instructor rating. From there on, I got all my instructor certs and that sort of carry on. Well, I went to Australia in 2001 for a year and was teaching on the Great Barrier Reef over there. And that was carnage. I was doing pretty much anywhere f up to 25 students a week. I was the Thursday instructor at Down Under Dive. These are the, my instructor ratings there. That's the SSI, my open water diver, down through here. Master Diver, DiveCon Instructor, Advanced Open Water Instructor, DiveCon Instructor and since then I've got the Master Instructor rating with SSI. New Zealand was a little bit behind on tech courses back then so I went to the UK and then proceeded to get all my SDI ratings and instructor ratings which is Scuba Diving International. Oh and SSI stands for Scuba Schools International. So I went over there and got uh, all my um, SDI instructor ratings there. Everything from underwater instru navigation instructor, photography instructor, equipment specialist, video, altitude, night limited visibility, uh, search and rescue, deep dive, shore, reconstructor, night trucks instructor, CPR 
instructor, qualified CPR first aid instructor. Oh, these, these ones here, the coolest actually, is solo diver and solo instructor. So that's actually a course I can teach where you train people to safely and successfully do solo dives. From there, I progressed on to TDI, which is Technical Diving International. I got mixed gas blender, 22 to 40% nitrox, nitrox instructor, advanced nitrox instructor, deco procedures instructor, and advanced wreck instructor. That's just a little bit of history with all my dive certs. Left the UK about 2004, came back to New Zealand with all the technical instructor ratings and that, and then started back up at Big Blue Dive and Fish, teaching nitrox courses and implementing all the technical dive stuff that I learnt over there. So I was running cave diving, advanced wreck diving, wreck penetration, and all that through the Big Blue nitrox. Back then, there wasn't really the people that had the money to want to buy all the tech dive gear or could afford it. Mixed gas too, bottles were $20 back then, $25 to get a one tank filled. So once you're running four cylinders, it actually adds up a bit of money in doing multiple dives. So the tech diving never really took off. Anyway, at the same time I was in the UK, an ex-Navy dude named Kevin Decker was running, started up the Macau Lumitoff Lodge, which was a lodge out in Port Gore. It was actually a brand new homestead that he started up there had the compressor and all that so you could do drive all the way out there fill your tanks out there and it was a short he'd take you on a short boat ride to the mikhail lumitov so once i met him i started running advanced rec courses on the mikhail with kevin over the years we did multiple multiple wreck dives through the wreck through the movie theater through all the lounges through the winter garden heaps of cool dives through there and heaps of courses i ran through the lumitov lodge as well kevin actually made up a really wicked booklet on the Mikhail Lumentoff. It's got all the history of the wreck, lots of photos, and it's got all the general arrangements of the boat and the deck plan. So it's got each individual deck layer, shows you all the rooms and the layout. So we could actually safely do the penetration dives through the wreck, going through the, the bars, going through the winter garden, also going through the cinema which was pretty cool that's pretty sketchy because there's not a lot of room from the seats to the roof and uh, it's pretty silty so once the first guy goes through the second guys are in a bit of trouble that's where as in a rebreather comes in real handy for diving this wreck because rebreathers there's no bubbles one of the dives i went in and it wasn't really planned i didn't run a line i had a dive buddy with me and i told him to stay out because i was heading into a to try and get some gas masks out of one of the cupboards i found some old classic russian gas masks opened the cupboard door grabbed them out and of course it silted up and i mean i had no idea where i was going and actually to be fair to this day i can't believe i actually survived that and it was purely because my mate had seen that it silted up he shined his torch in and he came in out through all the silt and just sort of grabbed me and we went headed out and Believe me, that was the one of probably the worst feelings I've ever come across or ever had diving. And when you're young, you just do stupid shit. And that was probably the dumbest thing I've ever done. But got some cool gas mask out of it. In 2007, Les Maddams, one of my instructor trainers from the UK, I uh, kept in contact with him and he wanted to do uh, some dives on the Mikhail. So he came over and we planned a pretty epic dive to go down into the playroom and get out some of the little Chucky dolls that were down there. The plan was is we were gonna head down the bottom below the pool room and go through a doorway there and then make our way in and down. Well, we got to the door and there was a door there. We were told and informed that there wasn't actually a door there. And anyway, long story short, there was a door there but it had quite a reasonable sized window and the window was all smashed out. So Les, we decided we we're gonna take our tank, all our tanks off, feed them through, then go through the door and carry on through. Well, Les started putting his first tank through the door, bumped the door and the whole door came down and it just silted up massively. One thing when we're doing advanced wreck dives, if we plan a dive and something unplanned happens, we abort the dive. So on that dive, we aborted it, just made our way up to the top and just did an external dive, few swim throughs and then came back up. And then the second dive, 
we made our way through to the playroom and got these, these creepy little dolls out, which you'll see in the photo. And I got quite a bit of stuff over the years out of there, but I donated it all to the Maritime Museum in Picton. If you go down there and go to the museum, you'll see these creepy little Chucky dolls that we got out of the wreck and a few other light fittings and bits and pieces. On this actual tape, I've got the salvage of the McHale when the first commercial guys were salvaging it. Me and Kevin actually paid some dodgy Russians to film the sister ship in Russia so we could use that footage for the doco. So this thing has been planned for a long time. The whole thing behind it was we're gonna film it underwater and then put sister ship footage next to it so you could see what it was before and after. I think the guys that were filming it with this tape were like obviously been sculling back the vodka because the footage is shit and all over the show so we couldn't really use it. I'll try and extract it to get it onto this video anyway. But long story short, that's a little bit of history on the Mikhail Lumintov, like I said, New Zealand's, one of New Zealand's worst maritime disasters and a little bit about my history and my instructor ratings and dive history. Once again guys, make sure if you're going to do any wreck uh, diving to get qualified or go with someone that knows what they're doing because seriously it, it is exceptionally dangerous and there's all sorts of shit can go wrong there. This first dive, I'm guiding a couple of guys through the Bolshaw Lounge and then up through one of the bars and then out through one of the top windows. So I really hope you enjoy this guys and there'll be plenty more Mikhail Lermitov videos on the way.